of Coker College will now read tonight's game environment play. Welcome to today's game between the Tuscaloosa Pioneers and the Coker Cobras. We see this field as an extension of our classroom environment where we learn dignity and respect for others. Today we ask for your enthusiastic support of your respective team. We also ask that you support the student athletes from both our institutions by honoring our respect to treat all fans, umpires, coaches, and student athletes with respect. Thank you for helping us respect our game. And now the teams are participating in a critical action as part of Sac Spring Sportsmanship Week. All this week, Sac Spring sports teams are showcasing their continued commitment to sportsmanship in conjunction with the NCAA's Group and Respect campaign. Respect, it's the name of the game. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry, this might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. Oh, I'm so sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Legendary discounts made Johnson City Toyota number one. And this month, our discounts are huge with savings up to $5,600 on new Toyotas. Camrys are discounted up to $3,800. So ready, set, go to Johnson City Toyota and get your savings today. It's fine. It'll be okay, okay? Nobody, nobody cares about the flowers. Who needs flowers at a, a wedding? At Ingalls, we know that the best of plans don't always go according to plan. My best friend's getting married today and the florist never showed. That's why we're always there when you need us. What are their colors? Purple and cream. With smiling faces and helping hands. No one cares. No one cares. You will look great. Flowers are not important. And where is Holly? Uh, have you any, anyone seen Holly? And although life will be predictably unpredictable. Let's get you to that wedding. A curveball is that much more satisfying. I got the flowers! When you knock it out of the park. Oh my gosh, it's awesome! <laughs> So when the plan goes out the window and improvisation becomes the order of the day, just remember, that's where the best of memories are made. All right, they're ready for us. True story. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Baseball action just about to start this evening between the Tuscaloosa Pioneers and the Coker Cobras. I'm Jim Miller. Our producer this evening is Nick Forsberg. Start of this three-game series. South Atlantic Conference matchup between these squads. Coker coming in with an overall record of 11 wins, 18 losses, and one tie. They are 5-10 and 10 in the conference, currently in sole possession of 7th place. Tusculum is 21-12 and 12 overall, 9-3 and 3 in the conference. They are tied for 4th place in the league with Wingate. Right-hander Charles Hall will get the start this evening for the Pioneers. Hall has been nothing short of dominant this season for Tusculum, making his ninth start of the season. He has a record of four wins, one loss, and a 1.45 earned run average. He's thrown 53 innings, allowed 37 hits, 11 earned runs. He's walked 17, 
and struck out 99, which leads Division II. Of course, you may recall, two weeks ago tonight, he pitched against Queens and set a Division II single game record with 22 strikeouts in that 10-1 victory. Opponents are hitting just 192 against Charles Hall, the pioneer right-hander. The lineup he'll face this evening for Coker, leading off is the second baseman, Blake Libran. Grant Thompson, the center fielder, bats second. Riley Hall in left field hits third. Larry McCabe, the first baseman, bats fourth. Chase Bruno playing third base hits fifth. R.J. Ball, the catcher, hitting sixth. Matt Swiderski, the right fielder, bats seventh. Cody Brown, the designated hitter, hitting eighth. And batting ninth is his shortstop, Casey Demko. Coker coached by Luke Harrigan. Tusculum coached by Brandon Steele in his first season. Defensively tonight for the Pioneers in left field is Jarrell McDade. Seth DeHaven is in center field and Zach Finch in right. Around the infield, Trey Hinton is at third, Bryson Ford the shortstop, Dalton Martin's at second base, and Garrett Dupuy at first base, and Nate Montgomery doing the catching for Charles Hall. First pitch of tonight's game to Lake Libran is chopped foul in the batter's box, one strike. Our first pitch this evening at 6.03. The current temperature in Greenville is it's been warm today 65 degrees cloudy skies no threat of rain tomorrow it's supposed to be 75 degrees Hall with the wind up in the 0-1 pitch breaking balls high a ball to strike Hall with that slider and curveball and when he has those pitches working he can be very very tough to hit Wind up by Hall in the 1-1 pitch. It's fouled away, a ball and two strikes. Leibrand is hitting 301. No home runs, 13 runs batted in. Leibrand's a junior, 5'9", 153 pounds, out of Lexington, South Carolina. Hall's 1-2 pitch is high, 2-2. Two two. Hall in his last start took the loss against Carson Newman last Friday. Worked seven and a third innings, allowed seven hits, four runs. Walked two and struck out 11. It was his seventh straight double-figure strikeout game, and he gets his first one tonight as Libran goes down on the slider. One out here in the top of the first. It'll bring up the center fielder, Grant Thompson. The center fielder, number four, Grant Thompson. Thompson, a Hartsville native. He's batting 348 on the year with no home runs, 17 runs batted in. Hall with the windup and the first pitch to him. Breaking ball way upstairs for a ball, one and nothing. One ball and no strikes to count to Grant Thompson. Hall's 1-0 pitch. Shot towards first. It'll go foul. It's a ball and a strike. Pioneers in their last game on Tuesday night, losing at Lee by a score of 8-3. to three. The last conference series was last weekend at Carson Newman. The Pioneers dropped the Friday game and then won both games on Saturday by identical scores of 12-8. to eight. Hall's 1-1 pitch stays high. It's two balls and one strike. Two and one the count to Grant Thompson. Ball's chopped foul at the plates. Two and two. Two balls and two strikes the count. With Riley Hall, the left fielder, waiting on deck. Hall with the windup and the 2 2 pitch. Beaten foul again, still 2 and 2. Two balls and two strikes, the count holds to Grant Thompson. Hall's strikeout to start the game, his 100th of the season. As Thompson steps out. Yeah, 
now Hall ready to work. He winds with the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him. And another breaking ball. Down goes Thompson. Two batters, two strikeouts for Charles Hall in the top of the first inning. There's that nasty break on that pitch and had Thompson flailing at that one for the second out. Riley Hall, the left fielder, steps in. Hall also a left-handed batter. A Hall on Hall matchup. No relation. Riley Hall's from Cooperstown, New York. The birthplace of baseball, they say. Charles Hall, meanwhile, is from Dumfries, Virginia. The windup and the first pitch to Riley Hall. He checks his swing. Did he go? And third place umpire Dave Mabe says he did one strike. Charles Dixon is calling balls and strikes in this game. Marvin King working at first base and Mabe over at third. One strike to count to Riley Hall. The 0 1 pitch. Breaking ball stays outside the ball and a strike. Hall's batting. 272 on the year, two home runs, 22 RBIs. The line in the 1-1 pitch, fastball swing and a miss, strike two. The Hall ahead in the count, one ball and two strikes. Two and two, or one and two the count. To Riley Hall. It's just missed. It's two and two. Two balls and two strikes to count to Riley Hall. Charles Hall with the wind, the 2-2 pitch. Fastball low, it's a full count. Larry McCabe, the first baseman, waits on deck. Wind up 3-2 pitch, low, ball four. So Riley Hall works the walk, and he is a two-out base runner for Larry McCabe, the first baseman. McCabe, a grad student, 6'5", 220 pounds, transfer from George Washington. Leads the team in home runs with six. They've only hit 10 as a team in 30 games, and he's hit six of them. Also knocked in 24 runs to lead the team, 10 doubles. 340 batting average for Larry McCabe. Hall working out of the stretch. And his pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. And strike the count to Larry McCabe. <laughs> Riley Hall taking his lead off first base. And the pitch. McCabe <laughs> for that. Half-hearted swing and a miss, strike two. No balls and two strikes to count to McCabe. Stretch by Hall. And the 0-2 pitch. Got him. Montgomery has to throw down to first base, and Dupuis stretches out and holds the bag, and the side is retired on the strikeout of the side by Charles Hall. Walk and one left. Middle of the first, it's Coker nothing, Tusculum nothing on the Pioneer Sports Network. Johnson City Toyota is the number one Toyota dealership in the Tri-Cities for the fourth year in a row. We sell more because we discount every vehicle every day. We give you a lifetime warranty and complimentary service. So I invite you to come see why Johnson City Toyota is number one.
Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. Hello, my name is... Bottom of the first inning coming up for Tusculum, they will face right-hander Griffin Holyfield, who's making his first start of the season. He has pitched 12 games out of the bullpen. He has a record of two wins, one loss, one save, and a 3.48 earned run average. In his 12 appearances, he's thrown 31 innings, 32 hits, 12 earned runs. He's walked eight, struck out 21, an opponent's hitting 260 against Griffin Holyfield. He's a senior, 5'10", 164 pounds out of Elgin, South Carolina. Coker does appear to, at times, uh, subscribe themselves to the... Uh, the opener uh, movement that's uh, taken over in baseball. Uh, they've had a couple outings this year where the starter has worked an inning or less. Um, sometimes conventionally, but sometimes they've uh, kind of gone by uh, a committee here. So Holyfield's getting the start. Again, his first start of this season. He has pitched often in relief. In fact, he pitched in four straight games for these Cobras. Recently, the weekend series against Wingate, he pitched a couple games there. And then last weekend, his last appearance against Catawba on Friday, he pitched three innings of relief, gave up seven runs in a 13 to 12 loss. Our ball and no strikes to count to Dalton Martin leading off for the Pioneers as Martin launches one to deep right field. Going back is the right fielder Swiderski. He looks up and it is gone. Solo home run to lead off the game for Dalton Martin, and the Pioneers jump to a quick 1 0 lead. Eighth home run of the season for Martin, his 37th run batted in. He jumped all over that 1-0 pitch and drove it over the fence and right. So a quick one nothing lead for the Pioneers. Is that pitch from Holyfield down and in in that power zone for a left-handed batter. Dalton Martin did not miss it. Swiderski gave chase, but he could do nothing but watch it sail over the fence. For the home run. Bryson Ford of the batter takes a strike. Ford hitting 325. He has a home run. 29 runs batted in. The 0 1 from Holyfield is slowing in for a ball. 1 and 1. So a very quick 1 0 lead here for the Pioneers at the bottom of the first. 1 1 to Ford. He pops that one up in the infield. Shortstop Demko plants himself underneath it and makes the catch for the out. So one down here in the first to bring out the catcher, Nate Montgomery. Montgomery is batting third. The rest of the pioneer lineup, Bradley Evans at DH in fourth. Trey Hinton, the third baseman, hits fifth. Garrett Dupuy at first base, bat six. Jarrell McDay plays left field and bat seven. Zach Fincham in right field, hits eighth. And Seth DeHaven celebrating a birthday today. Playing center field and batting ninth for the Pioneers. Pitch to Nate Montgomery is inside for a ball, one and nothing. Montgomery hitting 353 on the season with two home runs, 23 runs batted in. For the senior out of Geneva, Illinois. That pitch stays on the inside corner, one ball and one strike to Nate Montgomery. Montgomery picked up his 100th career hit. In the Pioneers' last game against the Lee on Tuesday, he went two for three in that game. In fact, he's had four straight multi-hit games, and he carries a 13-game hitting streak into tonight's action. He's down the counter ball and two strikes. The pitch popped up behind the plate. The catcher ball tosses the mask aside, looks, and he can't make the play. It might have hit the netting. It's no play. That's a ball and two strikes to Nate Montgomery. The way that ball kind of shied away from that, I almost think it hit the netting on the way down. The home plate umpire, Charles Dixon, did not indicate that it did, but 
to turn away like that makes me think that the trajectory might have been altered in some way. In any case, it's still a ball and two strikes to Nate Montgomery. His one-two pitch from Holyfield is lined to left foul on a play under the berm. Still a ball and two strikes. So Montgomery's been red hot lately, boosting that average all the way up to 353. Last weekend at Carson Newman, he was six for 13 with three runs batted in. Holyfield's one-two pitch and hit him. And Montgomery was hit for the 10th time this season. He'll take his base. Another hit batsman for the Pioneers. They've been hit a lot this season. 59 hit batsmen now. 34 Number 46, Bradley Evans. I'll bring up Bradley Evans, a designated hitter this evening. Evans hitting 250. He has a home run, three runs batted in, making his seventh start of the season, eighth appearance overall. After missing time at the beginning of the season with a hemi bone issue, but he's back and productive in that cleanup spot as he takes a strike. One strike to count to Bradley Evans, the designated hitter, the senior out of Polkville, North Carolina. Stretch in the 0-1 pitch. Hit in the hole. It's going to be a base hit into left field. Montgomery will take the turn and hold on at second. And Evans has the Pioneer's second hit. And Tuscan with runners at first and second and one out. The third baseman, Trey Hinton. It's batting 239, no runs, 13 runs batted. The stats may seem a little pedestrian, but consider he's walked 29 times this season. His on-base percentage is 465, which is second best on the team to Dalton Martin. So you, you get away with a 239 average if you're walking and getting on base almost half the time as he takes a pitch inside for a ball, one and nothing. One ball, no strikes to count to Trey Hinton. Hinton was starting at first base earlier this season, is now starting at third base, which is where he started a lot of last season. The 1 0 pitch is taken for a strike 1 and 1. Pioneers have done a little infield shuffle with Bryson Ford now uh, getting the starts at shortstop lately. 1 and 1 the count to Hinton. That pitch is high 2 and 1. Two balls and a strike to count to Trey Hinton. Hinton, the sophomore out of Knoxville, Christian Academy of Knoxville, CAK. 2-1 pitch. Line to right center field, giving chase is the right fielder. Sladurski, but it's going to split the gap and go to the wall. In to score is Montgomery. Coming around third is Evans, and he will score standing all the way from first base. It's a two-run double for Trey Hinton, and the Pioneers have a 3 to nothing lead. RBI's 14 and 15 for Hinton, his fifth double of the season. As he drove that one into the gap, Evans read it well. And Swiderski, the right fielder, unable to cut it off before it got to the wall. Montgomery scoring easily, and then the relay throw off target as Evans brings it all the way around from first to make it 3 0 Tuscal. Garrett Dupuy, the batter, checks his swing, takes the strike. Dupuy hitting 314 with two home runs, 15 runs batted in, making his 14th start of the season as he has worked his way into the starting lineup. Pitch is taken for a ball, one and one. Last time the Pioneers were here, back on March the 20th, a week ago Wednesday, uh, Dupuy went five for six with three RBIs. 1-1 pitch, it's pop foul out of play. It's a ball and two strikes. He had a pitch to hit and lost control of the bat and went off of the back behind the plate. So Dupuy gets a little pine tar or whatever adhesive substance he uses to keep his hand sticky on the bat. We'll get back in with a ball and two strike count, hitting the runner at the second base. Three runs in with one out here in the bottom of the first. Holyfield's pitch. Hit to left field. It's foul. It's well deep enough to have home run distance, but it is a foul ball. The count holds at a ball and two strikes to Garrett Dupuy. 
Dupuy, the sophomore, six foot, 220 pounds out of Kennesaw, Georgia. That pitch is outside. Stop by the catcher ball. It's two balls and two strikes to Garrett Dupuy with Terrell McDade waiting on deck. Dupuy's last start came last Friday against Carson Newman. He went two for four. 2-2 two -two pitch in the dirt blocked by ball. It's a full count. Three and two, the count to Garrett Dupuy. Holyfield with the stretch. And a full count pitch. Hit to right center field. Swiderski tracking it. He'll have it lined up and makes the catch as Hinton will retreat to second base, and that is the second out of the inning. So Dupuy retired on the liner to right. We'll bring up Jarrell McDade, the left fielder. McDade hitting 250 on the year, three home runs, 38 runs batted in. Which is second in the South Atlantic Conference to Chris Salvi of Lincoln Memorial, who's knocked in 45. That doesn't include what Salvi's done today, as LMU's leading 14 to nothing in their game over Finley in the seventh inning. Which is taken outside for a ball, one and nothing. Let's see what Salvi has done today in that contest. He has not knocked in any runs, so he holds on at 45 runs batted in. McDade 38, second in the conference. Martin's home run gives him 37. As McDade hits one to left field. Drifting in is the left fielder Hall, and he'll make the catch, and the side is retired. But for the Pioneers in the first, they get three runs on three hits, and they leave one. At the end of one, it's Tusculum three, Coke or nothing on the Pioneer Sports Network. Discounts made Johnson City Toyota number one. And this month, our discounts are huge with savings up to $5,600 on new Toyotas. Camrys are discounted up to $3,800. So ready, set, go to Johnson City Toyota and get your savings today. Top of the second inning here at Pioneer Park with Tusculum leading Coker 3 to nothing. Chase Bruno, the third baseman, will bat for the Cobras. Bruno hitting 337 with no home runs, 14 runs batted in. Freshman out of Somerville, South Carolina, 5'9", 150 pounds, facing Charles Hall, who struck out the side in the first inning. First pitch is a fastball low, one and nothing. Hall again now with 102 strikeouts on the season. Ethan Elliott of Lincoln Memorial, second in the conference with 69. Hall's 1-0 pitch, checks the swing, two and nothing. Hall's 1.87 earned run average is second best in the conference. Trailing only Quinton Driggers of Newberry, who has a 7-0 record and a 1-6-2 ERA. So those two likely will be battling it out for sack pitcher of the year honors. Three and zero the count to Bruno, and he takes that one for a strike. Speaking of Newberry, they're playing at Wingate in this weekend series. And they are scoreless in the third inning at Wingate as that one is hit to short. Playing on the hop is four to throw across in time for the out. One down here in the second, and it'll bring up the catcher, R.J. Ball. The catcher, number 27, R.J. Ball. Hitting 277 on the season with two home runs, 20 runs batted in. Senior, six foot, 230 pounds, out of Haines City, Florida, by way of Daytona State. Last year, hit 243 with four homers for the Cobras as he swings that one in right field for a base hit. 
First hit of the game for the Cobras off the bat of R.J. Ball, the catcher. And Matt Swiderski will step in for the Cobras. Number 12, Matt Swiderski. Swiderski hitting 254 on the year. No home runs, six runs batted in. He, too, also a transfer from Daytona State. And out of Port St. Lucie, Florida, 5'960 pound senior. Long stretch by Hall. The first pitch to him is outside for a ball, one and nothing. Newberry's now taking a one nothing lead on Wingate. They are they are still in the second inning. Lenore Ryan and Catawba scoreless in the third. They're playing at Lenore Ryan this evening. That pitch is low and in for a ball. Two balls and no strikes. Queens home with Mars Hill this weekend, and the Lions of Mars Hill have a 2-0 lead. They're in the second. Also, Carson Newman and Anderson, they are tied 1-1 after two at Anderson. Lincoln Memorial playing that non-conference series against Finley this weekend. 2-0 pitch to Swiderski is taken for a strike. Newberry currently leading the South Atlantic Conference standings at 11 and 1. Catawba and Lincoln Memorial are both 12 and 3. And then Tusculum and Wingate tied at 9 and 3 for fourth place with Lenore Ryan at 5, 4 and 8 in sixth. Coker currently 5 and 10 is in seventh place. 2-1 pitch is outside 3 and 1. So Coker comfortably in the top eight for a conference playoff, conference tournament appearance. They'd like to try and move up at least one spot. Three one pitch, hit to short, caught by four. This is gonna be a double play as the throw across is in time to catch ball as he wandered off first base. Ball misread that line drive off the bat. It was right at Bryson Ford. And his throw across in time for the out, as we see here on the replay. He hit it good, but he hit it right at Ford. I mean, literally hit it right at him. Ford went to a knee, and ball was off the bag. And his throw across got it easily for the out. So a line drive double play ends the third, top of the second inning for the Cobras. They did have a hit, and nobody left. Middle of the second, it's Tusculum three, Coker nothing on the Pioneer Sports Network. It's fine, it'll be okay, okay? Nobody nobody cares about the flowers. Who needs flowers at a, a wedding? At Ingalls, we know that the best of plans don't always go according to plan. My best friend's getting married today and the florist never showed. That's why we're always there when you need us. What are their colors? Purple and cream. With smiling faces and helping hands. No one cares, no one cares you will look great. Flowers are not important. And where is Holly? Uh, have you, any, anyone seen Holly? And although life will be predictably unpredictable. Let's get you to that wedding. A curveball is that much more satisfying. I got the flowers! When you knock it out of the park. Oh my gosh, it's awesome! So when the plan goes out the window and improvisation becomes the order of the day, just remember, that's where the best of memories are made. All right, they're ready for us. True story. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. New pitcher for Coker as they will go with the second pitcher here as Holyfield used as an opener. The uh, new pitcher for the Cobras is the right-hander, Michael DeLeo. DeLeo making his 10th appearance. He started four games, 24 and a third innings. He has a 9.99 earned run average. I didn't know there was such a thing. 38 hits, 27 earned runs. He's walked 16, struck out 19. Opponents hitting 373 against Michael DeLeo. He was a junior, 5'880 pounds out of Collins, New York, by way of Erie County Community College. He'll face Zach Fincham to lead off the uh, bottom of the second inning. Fincham hitting 250, a home, no home runs, 20 runs batted in. First pitch to him is taken for a ball, one and nothing. Fincham, the hometown native from Greenville, four year starter. One ball, one strike to Zach Fincham. Fincham, 183 career hits as he continues to. 
creep towards that 200 hit mark for his career. He swings and misses on the slider. One ball and two strikes. 295 career hitter is Zach Fincham in 180 games for the Pioneers. DeLeo's last appearance was against Catawba on last Friday. That one is hit to short. Demko can't handle it. And it's going to be probably an error. We'll see. It will be an error on the shortstop. As we see on the replay here, he chopped it to short. Demko charged it and really kind of played it side saddle a little bit, and that's going to be an error on the shortstop. Seth DeHaven, who is celebrating a birthday today, is batting for the Pioneers. Haven hitting 312, no home runs, 18 runs batted in. Celebrating birthday number 23 today is Seth DeHaven. Now the count one strike. DeHaven four doubles, three triples. Also 10 stolen bases for the Pioneers. And he has been a stout hitter in that number nine spot for these Pioneers. Pitch is... Fincham takes off, a throw by ball to second base, goes into center field, but no chance for advance for Zach Fincham, who's got his sixth stolen base of the year in eight attempts. So he's at second with nobody out. So the Haven will try and move him over. Adding with the 1-1 count. Stretch by DeLeo. Long look and the pitch. Chop foul. It's ball and two strikes. Third base coach Todd Miller unable to handle that one. Coaching over at first base is John Topoleski, grad assistant. Todd Ireland, the associate head coach and pitching coach. And, of course, Brandon Steele in his first year as head coach of the Pioneers after a long time as the assistant to Doug Jones, who... Step down after last season to concentrate on being athletic director. He's down on strikes. Goes Seth DeHaven for the first out. Dalton Martin will bat. Martin Homer to lead off the bottom of the first inning. His eighth home run of the season. So Martin now. Still third in the conference in RBIs with 37. His eight home runs are now tied for third in the league. First pitch to him is blowing in for a ball, one and nothing. Home run was his 16th career home run, and now he has 195 career hits as he continues to close in on the 200 hit mark. All-American last season, preseason All-American this year. He takes that one low and in for a ball, two and nothing. Martin already with the career high in walks with 30. Career high in homers with eight. One shy of his career high in doubles with 19. And he had good numbers. I mean, it's not like he's, he's he was a chump for the first two years. He was an All-American last year, and he's putting up numbers that are going to surpass those easily this year. 2-0 pitch. Launched to right center field. Going back is the center fielder Thompson. He's at the track. He's at the wall, and he makes the catch. Giving it a ride was Martin. He came oh so close to his second home run of the game. But instead, it's a long out, and moving over to third base is Fincham. He hit that one so high, and in the deepest part of the ballpark, it's 400 to straightaway center field. Just didn't think he had enough extension on it, but Thompson kept going back. He turned and went to find his spot as he got to the warning track right in front of the O oh, and the N and Pioneers on the wall. He made the catch, allowing Finch to easily take third. Two outs, it's Bryson Ford at the plate. Ford takes the pitch outside for a ball, one and nothing. Ford popped up to short his first time up. So DeLeo trying to strain a runner at third base here in this second inning. 
1-0 pitch. In the dirt, bounces away from ball, and coming in to score will be Fincham. And it's 4-0 Pioneers on the wild pitch. So the run winds up being unearned because of the air. Ball really had no chance on the way. He had no chance to get over and block it. That pitch was well out of the zone. 2-0 the count to Bryson Ford. Pitch is inside for a strike. 2-1. Ford has hit safely in eight of his last nine games. He slings that one in the hole for a base hit. So Ford gets a hit here with two outs. That's the fourth hit of the game for the Pioneers. And Nate Montgomery will bat. Montgomery was hit by a pitch and scored back in the first. Ford will have to be watched on the base paths. He has stolen 16 bases in 17 attempts. Those 16 stolen bases are good for fourth in the conference. Zach Little of Wingate leads the conference in steals with 26. Not much of a lead for Ford at this time. Pitch to Montgomery, swing and a miss, strike one. One strike to count to Nate Montgomery. On deck is the designated hitter, Bradley Evans. Ford gets a running start. The pitch is a strike. The throw to second is going to be late. Stolen base for Bryson Ford. It's his 17th of the season. As he hopped off the bag and then just took off running. And coming up to catch the throw is the second baseman, Libran, but no chance there. On the stolen base by Bryson Ford, second steal of the inning for the Pioneers. But Montgomery batting with uh, count no balls and two strikes. Stretch by DeLeo, the 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball, foul back to the screen, still nothing in two. South Atlantic Conference scoreboard, Newberry leads at Wingate 3-0 in the bottom of the second. Taub and Lenore Ryan still scoreless. They're in the fourth. Mars Hill leads Queens three to nothing. So they're still playing in the bottom of the second inning at Queens. The 0-2 pitch to Montgomery is low and away, one and two. Carson Newman and Anderson top of the third inning at Anderson. They're tied at one. I believe, I'm looking away there, but I believe there might have been a balk. It was a bulk. Move the runner up to third. Still 0-2 the count to Montgomery. The pitch, chop foul. Still nothing in two. Snowballs and two strikes. The count holds to Nate Montgomery. DeLeo. Ready to work the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He got it. Montgomery goes down swinging. Second strike out of the inning for Michael DeLeo. But another run in the inning for the Pioneers. A hit, an error, and one left on base. The end of two. It's Tusculum 4. Coke or nothing on the Pioneers Sports Network. We are in Grange County, Tennessee here at Pierce Farms. And uh, the Pierce family has been working with Ingles for over 30 years. It means a great deal supplying uh, produce. As a local farmer, uh, it really touches base knowing that we're just simple people just trying to help and we love what we do and Ingalls is a huge part of helping us do it. Farming is who we are and it's in our blood. God has really blessed us with the sun and the soil to grow the best tomatoes you'll find anywhere. <laughs> I believe it's really in the soil. So if you're in Granger County and you farm tomatoes, then you're, you're in. <laughs> just a great blessing on us to actually farm and be able to farm and to supply tomatoes to people and Ingalls really cares about family farms like Pierce Farms and they really care about their customers. We're just glad to be a part of that. God has blessed us with a really great partnership there. They make fresh local produce have real meaning for lots of people. I'm Shane Pierce and this is my Ingalls story. Johnson. 
Top of the third inning here at Pioneer Park, and Charles Hall working with a four to nothing lead. As he will be dealing with the bottom of the Coker lineup. So leading off here for Coker in the third inning is the designated hitter. Pitch is taken for a ball. One ball and no strikes to count. Bounced up there, two balls and no strikes. Two and nothing to count. High three and nothing. Pitch is taken for ball four. That's the four pitch walk to start this third inning. Casey Demko, the shortstop, will bat. Demko hitting 353, no home runs, 10 runs batted in. Infield will look for two. Hall, first pitch, right there for a strike. Demko out of Xenia, Ohio. Played baseball at Sinclair Community College. Throw over first. Last weekend in the series against Catawba, which Coker was swept. Demko went three for nine with two runs scored and two runs batted in. Coker's lost four in a row. This one's hit to short. Four charges. He flips to second on to first. Not in time. Didn't look like a double play ball off the bat, but the middle infield almost able to turn two as Demko beats it out. And with one down, it'll be back to the top. The order of the second baseman, Lake Libran. Libran struck out swinging his first time up. Libran, a junior out of Lexington, South Carolina. Three oh one average this season is a career high so far. Get two eighty seven with twenty four RBIs as a freshman. Hughes that one foul to the backstop one strike and hit the brick wall behind the plate and carried all the way back out between first and the pitcher's mound as Garrett Dupuy retrieves it and tosses it back to the dugout one strike the count to Libran Demko the runner at first base Go one from Hall. There for strike two. Hall with three strikeouts all in the first inning. He's ahead in the count. No balls and two strikes to Libran. Grover first. Back is Demko. Demko with one stolen base in two attempts. The team Coker, 22 stolen bases. They've been caught 11 times. Coker's opponents coming into play today had stolen 72 bases in 30 games. Tussling with two so far today. 
Nothing in two to count the pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him. Lybrand goes down swinging for the second time. Fourth strikeout of the game for Hall. That's two down here in the third. The center fielder Grant Thompson will bat. Thompson struck out swinging his first time up. The Lybrand went fishing for that one. Came up empty. Thompson out of Hartsville, South Carolina. Junior, six foot, 170 pounds. Previously went to Spartanburg Methodist. So two down here for Thompson. Over the first, and back is Demko. Thompson, nine doubles on the season, 17 runs batted in. Hall comes set. Demko, the lead at first, and the pitch is taken for a strike. Coker, 5-10 and ten in the conference. They took two out of three from Mars Hill back on the February 24th and 25th. Took two out of three from Queens. Took one out of three from Newberry. Got swept by Wingate and then swept by Catawba. So they've lost their last eight conference games. They're getting off to a 5-2 and two start. One strike to Thompson. Demko runs, the pitch is high, the throw down, and out at second base as Ford applies the tag for the third out. Nice throw by Nate Montgomery. It was a high fastball, good pitch to throw, and Ford gets the tag down in time for the out as he caught the ball behind the base, allowing him to get the tag down onto the sliding Demko for the third out. No runs, no hits, and nobody left. At the end of two and a half, it's Tusculum 4, Coker nothing on the Pioneer Sports Network. Johnson City Toyota is the number one Toyota dealership in the Tri-Cities for the fourth year in a row. We sell more because we discount every vehicle every day. We give you a lifetime warranty and complimentary service. So I invite you to come see why Johnson City Toyota is number one. Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. Hello, my name is Jacob Faith, and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. Bottom of the third inning here at Pioneer Park with Tusculum leading Coker 4 to nothing. Bradley Evans, the cleanup hitter, will bat. Evans singled and scored all the way from first base on a double by Trey Hinton back in the first. The first pitch to him is taken for a ball 1 and nothing. One ball and no strikes to count to Bradley Evans. Biggie will be followed by Hinton and Dupuy here in the third. That pitch hits him in the back. So Evans will take his base after being hit by the pitch. Fourth time he's been hit. This is his eighth game of the season. He's been hit four times. Scouting report. Pitch him inside. Trey Hinton, the batter. Hinton with a two-run double to right center field his first time up. Knocked in a pair. Hinton now with 15 RBIs on the season. Pitch to him from DeLeo is taken for a ball one and nothing. One ball and no strikes the count to... Trey Hinton. Next pitch is inside, two and nothing. Evans, the runner at first base, in case you were wondering, has never attempted a stolen base. Next pitch is inside, low, three and nothing. So Hinton, who's got the good eye, ahead in the count, three balls and no strikes. Three-zero from DeLeo. 
inside corner, strike one. Hinton's 29 walks are third in the conference behind his teammate Dalton Martin, who's got 30 in the conference leader with 31 walks this season. Being Heath Mitchum of Catawba. And there's the walk to Hinton, his 30th base on balls this season. And Garrett Dupuis will bat with two on and nobody out. Dupuis lined out to right center field his first time up. Wingate's come back to tie Newberry 3-3, bottom of the second in their game this evening. Catawba and Lenore Ryan still scoreless in the fourth. And Queens and Mars Hill, it's Mars Hill 3-0 in the third. Carson Newman now leads Anderson 5-1 in the third inning. And Lincoln Memorial, in a non-conference game, beat Finley by a score of 15-1. LMU now 24 and 11 on the season is taking the strike is Garrett Dupuy. DeLeo's 0-1 pitch is low for a strike, nothing in two. No balls and two strikes to count to Garrett Dupuy. Jarrell McDade waiting on deck. Stretch in the 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. And down goes Dupuy on strikes. Third strikeout for DeLeo. One down here in the third. So Jarrell McDade will come to the plate. McDade flying out to left his first time up. McDade, the senior out of Magnolia, Texas. 5'10", 215 pounds. Went to Tyler Junior College. 13 career home runs for the Pioneers. He had 10 last year and got all region selection. First pitch to him. Outside, off the glove of the catcher, ball. That should be a wild pitch. In any case, the runners are now at second and third. With one out. So McDade a chance to add to his RBI total. Last weekend at Carson Newman, he knocked in eight runs in three games. In fact, he, hit, he knocked in eight in the doubleheader. Five for eight with eight RBIs in that twin bill. Pops out with a foul. It's a ball and a strike. Nate had a five RBI game against Carson Newman. He knocked in six against Mars Hill. He knocked in five against Wingate. So his numbers are boosted by his... Uh, the job he's done in some of these conference games. He has 21 RBIs in 12 conference games this year. One and one the count to McDade. Pitches up and in, two and one. Tuesday, McDade was one for four with a double in the loss to Lee. Batting with a two and one count, one out here in the second or third with runners at second and third. The pitch hit foul to the backstop. It's two balls and two strikes. Pioneers with four runs, four hits, no errors. Coker, no runs, one hit, and one error. Michael DeLeo is in for the sign. His time is called. Now ready to go with the 2-2 count here on Jarrell McDade. 2-2 pitch. Hit to center field. Not real deep. Going back is going to be the shortstop. Demko, he makes the catch. No tag from Evans. That will be the second out of the inning. So McDade out in front of that pitch and winds up popping it up to short for the second out of the inning. So Zach Fincham will try and deliver the runs. Fincham safe on an error, stole second and scored on a wild pitch back in the second inning. Evans still at third base, hitting at second. As DeLeo can see his way out of this third inning jam. Pitch. 
on the outside corner, strike one. After this series, the Pioneers will be on the road the next two weeks. They'll be at Anderson next weekend and then home with Lincoln Memorial three-game series two weeks from now. Liner to short, and Demko goes to a knee to make the catch and retire the side. No runs in the inning for the Pioneers, no hits, and two left after three. It's Tusculum four, Coker nothing on the Pioneers Sports Network. It's Demko makes the catch to end the inning. Top of the fourth inning for Coker and Grant Thompson, the center fielder, is batting. Thompson was at bat when Casey Demko was caught stealing to end the third inning. So in reality, this is the third time he's gotten a chance to see Charles Hall. You know that at bat in the third inning did not complete. One ball and no strikes to count to Thompson. The pitch from Hall is taken low and in two and nothing. Two balls and no strikes to count to Grant Thompson. He'll be followed by Riley Hall and Larry McCabe here in the fourth. Pitch is high, three and nothing. So Hall's command's been off a little bit today, and that pitch is in there for a strike, three and one. Hall has walked 17 batters in 53 innings coming in today. He's only he's walked two in the first three innings, but he's had some deep counts and another strike taken. It's three balls and two strikes. Payoff pitch is taken for ball four. So Thompson, who struck out in the second, walks to lead off the fourth. And that'll bring Riley Hall to the plate. I'm letting the left fielder, number eight, Riley Hall. Hall walked back in the first. Stretch by Charles Hall. Pitch. He's there for a strike. Let's strike the count to Riley Hall. Stretch by Charles Hall. Runner goes. The pitch is a strike. The throw to second, and he's out by a mile. Great throw again by Nate Montgomery, the second runner he's thrown out in as many innings. Thompson didn't get a great jump, and the pitch was right there, and he's out by eight feet. As applying the tag is Bryson Ford for the first out. 2-6 goes the caught stealing, and there's one down. No balls and two strikes to count to Riley Hall. Called strike three, struck him out. Fifth strikeout for Charles Hall, and very quickly there's two outs here in the fourth. First baseman, number 25, Larry McCabe. So Nate Montgomery has gunned down a pair of runners trying to steal here 
in this ball game. Larry McCabe, the batter. McCabe struck out to end the first. Wind up by Hall in the first pitch to him is chop foul, one strike. So Hall with five strikeouts now in the game, halfway to getting double figures. He has struck out double figures in seven straight starts. One strike to count, the pitch to McCabe, foul to the screen, nothing in two. Nothing in two to count to Larry McCabe. Hall, the windup, and the 0-2 pitch. Outside, one and two. One ball and two strikes to count to Larry McCabe. Two outs here in the fourth, and Tuscan leading Coker by a score of four to nothing. Hall, the wind, the one-two pitch. Breaking ball, swing and a miss, struck him out as Montgomery applies the tag, and that's six strikeouts for Charles Hall. And that'll do it for Coker here in the fourth. The leadoff walk, caught stealing, and then two strikeouts for Charles Hall. Middle of the fourth, it is Tusculum 4, Coker nothing on the Pioneer Sports Network. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry, this might be new for you but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Legendary discounts made Johnson City Toyota number one. And this month, our discounts are huge with savings up to $5,600 on new Toyotas. Camrys are discounted up to $3,800. So ready, set, go to Johnson City Toyota and get your savings today. Bottom of the fourth coming up here at Pioneer Park with Tusculum leading by a score of four to nothing. Michael DeLeo came on to start the second inning. He's allowed one run on one hit through his first two innings of work. It'll be DeHaven, Martin, and Ford do up for the Pioneers here in this bottom half of the fourth inning. So here comes Seth DeHaven, who struck out looking his first time up. Leading off the line is the center fielder, number one, Seth DeHaven. DeHaven facing DeLeo here in the fourth inning. First pitch to him is on outside for a ball, one to nothing. DeLeo's last appearance came on Saturday at Cata home against Catawba, an 11-7 loss. He pitched three innings of relief, allowed six hits, four runs. As DeHaven lines a base hit into left field. The Haven with good wheels makes the big turn and he'll force Hall's throw into second base. As DeHaven retreats, he's got a single. It's the fifth hit of the game for the Pioneers. So Seth DeHaven celebrating his birthday today gets a base hit. The second base is number five, Dalton Martin. Dalton Martin at the plate. Martin homer to lead off the bottom of the first inning and then almost hit one in the second inning as he took Thompson to the track in center field for the out. Martin, his eighth home run of the season, now 37 runs batted in. DeHaven on at first base. He has stolen 10 bases in 12 attempts. One of three pioneers in double figures and steals along with McDade and Ford. Pitch in the dirt. Gets away from the catcher ball. Another wild pitch for this pitching staff for Coker. It's DeLeo's third wild pitch in as many innings. And DeHaven is in scoring position with nobody out. So 
So Martin will try and move the runner along here. The stretch by DeLeo in the pitch. Stays high. It's two balls and no strikes to Dalton Martin. Martin, the junior, 5'10", 210 pounds out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Ahead and count, two balls and no strikes. Pitch inside, three and nothing. Bryson Ford waits on deck. There is no activity in the Coker bullpen at this moment. Three and oh, the count to Dalton Martin. Doubtful that he get a green light here, but you never know. He did. He didn't like the pitch. He takes ball four. So Dalton Martin draws a walk. He regains the team lead in walks. He's now walked 31 times this season. And Tusculum with two on and nobody out. His catcher, R.J. Ball, will go to the mound to try and get his pitcher, Michael DeLeo, on the same page here. Single and a walk. And the Pioneers have a rally going here in the fourth inning. Bryson Ford popped up and singled and also stolen a base. Now heading for the Pioneers. Newberry Wingate 3-3 three, there three, in the top of the fourth inning. But Orion Katama still scoreless. They've gone to the fifth. Queens has taken the lead on Mars Hill 4-3 to three in the bottom. Of the, now they've gone to the top of the fourth. they got four runs in the bottom of the third. And Carson Newman leads Anderson 5-2 there in the fourth. Here's South Atlantic Conference scoreboard. Pitch to Ford is... Stopped by ball. It got behind him, but no chance for advance. One ball and no strikes to count to Bryson Ford. Stretch now. Now DeLeo will step off. Stretch. 1 0 to Ford. It's a pop foul. It's a ball and a strike. <coughs> Coker only has three more home games this season. They have a three game series with Anderson two weeks from today. Other than that, they're on the road the rest of the way. 12 road games and three home games left for these Covers. 1 1, and now stepping off is DeLeo. After this series, they'll play at UNC Pembroke on Tuesday, and then a three-game non-conference series next weekend down in Florida against Eckerd. And a trip to St. Andrews, the college, not the golf course. One-one pitch, and runners go. The pitch is a strike. The throw to third is off the chest of the third baseman, Bruno. No advance, as it's a double steal. DeHaven steals third, and Martin steals second. They picked a good pitch to go on, a slow breaking ball, and ball fired down to third base, and he bounced the throw down there, and in safely was DeHaven, who thought about coming home, but ball didn't get far enough away from the third baseman, Bruno. The runner's now at second and third, and they'll play in at the corners with a 1-2 count to Bryson Ford. Leo's pitch, just off the plate, 2-2. Two and two. So Tusculum now with four stolen bases in the game. Two balls and two strikes to count to Bryson Ford with Nate Montgomery waiting on deck. 2-2 two -two pitch. Loop to third, caught. No, it's a short, or no, it is caught. And it's going to be a double play. DeHaven thought it was not a line drive. And here comes... Brandon Steele, see if we can see on the replay what wound up happening. They're claiming, or the Steele is claiming, and I thought so too, and that's what DeHaven thought, that Ford hit the ball off the ground and hit a one hopper. See if we can tell here on the replay, looking from behind, it's going to be a little bit tough to see. Here comes the pitch. The umpires are huddled discussing it. It, it, you can't tell from that angle 
But the way that everybody reacted, they reacted like it was not a, a line drive. It's a nice play by the third baseman, Bruno, and then he didn't know what to do with the ball. And then he went and tagged third base. So the discussion is underway. So, the discussion is on. DeHaven scored on the play, and they're going to say it's a double play. It is a double play. So, a break for the Cobras, as it's a five unassisted double play, and Ford and DeHaven are out. Very quickly, two outs here in this fourth inning. For Nate Montgomery, the catcher, Montgomery was hit by a pitch and scored in the first and struck out in the second. So a liner to third turns into a double play. Pitch to Montgomery. Right there for a strike. I think they got it right. There was no further discussion from the Tusculum bench after the call was made. But certainly Ford would have known if he would have hit the ball off the ground. In any event, it's two outs and the runner at second base. The 0 one to Montgomery. That is a chopper to short. High hop for Demko as throw across is in time for the out and the side is retired. So, after all that, no runs in the inning for the Pioneers, a hit. And one left on base. We're through four. It's Tusculum four. Coker nothing on the Pioneer Sports Network. It's fine. It'll be okay, okay? Nobody nobody cares about the flowers. Who needs flowers at a, a wedding? At Ingalls, we know that the best of plans don't always go according to plan. My best friend's getting married today and the florist never showed. That's why we're always there when you need us. What are their colors? Purple and cream. With smiling faces and helping hands. No one cares. No one cares. You will look great. Flowers are not important. And where is Holly? Uh, have you any, anyone seen Holly? And although life will be predictably unpredictable. Let's get you to that wedding. A curveball is that much more satisfying. I got the flowers! When you knock it out of the park. Oh my gosh, we all said you got so when the plan goes out the window and improvisation becomes the order of the day, just remember, that's where the best of memories are made. All right, they're ready for us. True story. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Ready, set, go to Johnson City Toyota, where new Tacomas start at $309 a month with zero down. Drive the all-new RAV4 for $209 a month or save over $4,000 on Highlander. See more great deals at johnsoncitytoyota.com. Top of the fifth inning here at Pioneer Park with the Pioneers leading Coker by a score of 4 to nothing. Jim Miller here with you this evening from Beautiful Pioneer Park in Greenville, Tennessee. Our producer this evening is Nick Forsberg. Cloudy skies, but no rain. Temperatures in the mid-60s. Tomorrow's supposed to be beautiful as well for a doubleheader. First pitch tomorrow will be a 1 o'clock. There will not be video tomorrow. We will not have video of tomorrow's games. We will have live stats available through TuscanPioneers.com. Again, no video tomorrow for our doubleheader here at Pioneer Park. First pitch of the fifth inning is lined to right field by the third baseman, Chase Bruno, and it's held up in time for the catch by Zach Fincham for the first out. R.J. Ball will bat. He's singled and was out on a double play ground ball in the second inning. How about the catcher, R.J. Ball? So one pitch and one out for Hall here in the fifth. First pitch to ball is taken for ball. Paul's allowed one hit so far through four and a third innings. That was that single by ball back in the second inning. Pitch is taken for a ball, two and nothing. Hall at 56 pitches. Now 58 pitches here in this fifth inning. 2 0 pitch. Skied in the air. 
shallow center field. DeHaven charging in. He calls off everybody, and he makes the catch for the out. DeHaven makes the catch in shallow right center field. His hat stayed about 10 feet from where he was standing. As McDade comes over and retrieves it for him for the second out. Ball was hit in the air, and DeHaven immediately flipped the hat off and came charging in to make the catch. There's one less thing he got to worry about. So two up and two down, and the right fielder Matt Swiderski will bat. Swiderski lined into a double play in the second inning. That pitch is taken for a strike. One of two line drive double plays we've seen today. As uh, he caught the ball off first base. That pitch is there for a strike. Hall trying to make it a quick one, two, three inning as he's ahead of the count. No balls and two strikes, and I just jinxed everything I know. One ball and two strikes. Never say it's a quick inning. Never say the game is going by fast. I'm just going to throw all those superstitions out the window here right now. One ball and two strikes to count to Swiderski. Pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him. See? It all worked out for the Pioneers that inning. No runs, no hits, nobody left. Middle of the fifth. We're halfway through. It's Tusculum four, Coker nothing on the Pioneer Sports Network. Bottom of the fifth here at Pioneer Park with Tusculum leading Coker by a score of four to nothing. Bradley Evans, Trey Hinton, Garrett Dupuy do up for the Pioneers here in the fifth inning against Michael DeLeo, who's allowed one unearned run in three innings so far. Keep his team in the ball game. Evans singled and scored in the first and was hit by a pitch in the third. First pitch to him is outside for a ball, one and nothing. Four runs, five hits, no errors for the Pioneers. No runs, one hit, one error for the Cobras. Pitch. Evans is bounced up there. Two balls and no strikes. No activity right now in the Coker bullpen, although there are some players down there milling around. Nobody in the Tusculum bullpen. 2-0 pitch to Evans is on the outside corner. Strike one. Two balls and one strike to count to Bradley Evans. Wind up in the 2 1 pitch. It's high, 3 and 1. Tusculum 13 and 1 at home this season. They're only lost to Alabama Huntsville back on March 13th. 3 1 pitch. It's high ball 4. And Bradley Evans, for the third time in this game, has reached base, this time by walk. Trey Hinton will bat. Hinton also working on a perfect evening. He's doubled on two runs. And now back to third baseman, number six, Trey Hinton. Pioneers have put up big numbers here at Pioneer Park this season. Averaging about 10 runs of all game. Showing Bunt taking a ball is Hinton. Pioneers have scored 145 runs in 14 home games, which is just over 10 runs a game. They've only hit five home runs, now six home runs this season at Pioneer Park. They make their damage on the two base hits, 45 doubles and 
14 home games coming into tonight. Hinton takes a strike. Pioneers at 324 at home, 258 on the road. One one pitch, it's high two and one. Muscle averaging just over eight runs a game in conference play so far. Two and one the count to Trey Hinton. The pitch checks his swing, takes high three and one. Hinton looking to. Move into a tie for the conference lead and walks. And takes a strike. Martin shares the league lead and walks with Heath Mitchum of Catawba at 31, hitting right behind at 30. Full count. And DeLeo's payoff pitch is high, ball four. So there's the walk to Hinton, his second of the evening, 31st of the season. And now both Evans and Hinton have reached base three times. Garrett Dupuy will bat. Dupuy struck out last inning with both runners here on base. Also lined out back in the first. DeLeo's longest appearance of the season was six and a third innings in a start against St. Andrews back on February the 5th. He got the win in an 11-3 Coker victory. Longest relief outing of the year was that oh, it was a four inning stint at Wingate two weeks ago. It's now bullpen is starting to stir. Somebody is starting to do some tossing down there. As the pitch is popped up by Dupuy off the first base side. Kate giving chase, but it'll go about six rows deep into the grandstand. One strike to count to Garrett Dupuy. Nice crowd on hand this evening here at Pioneer Park. Nice evening for baseball, the last weekend of March. Stretch by DeLeo. If we shows bunt, takes outside of all the strike. Pioneer Park, also the home of the Greenville Reds, who will play their second season this summer. Greenville's had a team in the Appalachian League since 2004, formerly affiliated with Houston, now in their second season with Cincinnati. 1-1 the count to Dupuy. The pitch is there for a strike, 1-2. and two. One ball and two strikes to count to Garrett Dupuy. Stretch by DeLeo. One two pitch. Line, line foul to the backstop, still one and two. Tuscan women's tennis team gets a victory today. They beat Lenore Ryan by a score of five to two. As they stay hot. Still undefeated in the South Atlantic Conference. The men lost their match to Lenore Ryan. They're finishing that up, but LR has gotten the victory there. One and two the count, and now stepping off and looking Evans back to second. Ball and two strikes to count to Dupuy. Leo's pitch, breaking ball, swing and a miss. He got it. Second time he struck out Dupuy. One down here in the fifth. Jarrell McDade will bat. McDade has flied out to left and popped up to short. Left fielder, number 20, Jarrell McDade. So McDade batting again with two runners on base. Stretch by DeLeo, and the first pitch to him, low and away, one ball and no strikes. The 
date, 38 RBIs this season. Salvi wound up knocking in a few more runs today. He's up to 45 RBIs for LMU. McDade one ahead of his teammate Dalton Martin for second place in the conference. 1-0 pitch to it. Chop foul. It's a ball and a strike. One ball and one strike to count to Jarrell McDade. Newberry and Wingate, 3-3, three, three, top of the fifth inning at Wingate. Taba has taken the lead on Lenore Ride. They're up 3-0 in the seventh at Hickory. DeLeo with the 1-1 pitch. Breaking ball swung on and missed. It's in the dirt. Throw down to third. And out at third base is Evans trying to advance. The pitch in the dirt. It didn't get away very far. And ball came up throwing. And applying the tag and getting the out at third base for the second out. So not a caught stealing. That's an out advancing 2-5 to five for the second out of the inning. Staying at first base is Hinton. Evans trying to read that dirt ball, which is encouraged, and, but it just didn't get away far enough. 1-2 to McDade. Chopped to third. Foul. That's trying to make the play. It was third baseman Bruno. Ball and two strikes to Jarrell. Tomba leading 3-0 in the seventh. Queens now trails Mars Hill. It's 7-4 Mars Hill. There's the fourth inning. Carson Newman playing Anderson this evening in the other conference game. Get that score update for you here in just a moment. Ball and two strikes to count to McDade. The pitch has popped up foul. It's out of play. One and two, the count holds to Jarrell McDade. Carson Newman leads Anderson 6-2. to two. They are in the top of the fifth inning at Anderson. Rorine Tennis wins that match 4-3 to three in the men over Tuscola. Up the middle into center field. It's a base hit for Jarrell McDade. Stopping at second base is Trey Hinton. So McDade has his first hit of the night. Sixth hit of the game for the Pioneers. The runners now at first and second with two outs for Zach Fincher. Fincher reached on an error, stole a base, and scored in the second, and then lined a short to end the third. Two outs, two on here in the fifth. Leo's pitch. Line to left center field. It's hanging up, but able to make the catch. It's the left fielder Hall. That ball just hung up there for him. It looked like it was going to split the gap, but I wasn't sure. And Hall managed to get over there in time. He had a long run from left field all the way into left center, and he winds up getting there to make the catch. A nice play by the left fielder Riley Hall. And the Pioneers are turned away here in the fifth. No runs, a hit, two left. We're through five. It's Tusculum four. Coke or nothing on the Pioneers Sports Network. Johnson City Toyota is the number one Toyota dealership in the Tri-Cities for the fourth year in a row. We sell more because we discount every vehicle every day. We give you a lifetime warranty and complimentary service. So I invite you to come see why Johnson City Toyota is number one. Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. Hello, my name is Jacob Faith. We head to the top of the sixth inning with Charles Hall having allowed one hit through five innings. He has struck out seven and walked three. He is trying for his seventh consecutive double-digit strikeout game. 
He'll have the 8-9-1 batters. Austin Morris will lead off for the Cobras here in the top of the sixth inning. Morris walked and was a race on a fielder's choice grounder back in the third. Morris, a junior out of Hartsville by way of USC Sumter. He's hitting 389 on the season, 7 for 18 with three RBIs. Takes that one for a ball. Wind up and the pitch from Hall. Low, 2 and nothing. Two balls and no strikes to count to Austin Morris, the designated hitter leading off the sixth. 2 0 pitch. Strike two and one. Two balls and one strike to count. Morris, Demko, Libran do up here in the sixth. 2 1. That's the glove of Montgomery. Three balls and one strike. Three and one the count to Austin Morris leading off the top of the sixth inning. Pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Hall struck out six in his first start of the year against Barry back on February the 1st. And he struck out 16 at Belmont Abbey in a no decision on February 8th. Three two pitch. Line foul. Still three and two. He struck out 10 in six innings in a 15 nothing victory over Notre Dame on February 15th. 11 in five innings and a 10-5 win over Goldie Beacom on February 24th. Then 10 uh, batters against Wingate in a no decision to 3-2 win. As he gets his eighth strike out of the game as Morris goes down swing to open up the sixth inning. Casey Demko will bat. Demko ran out of the fielder's choice his first time up and later was caught stealing. Then 13 strikeouts in six and two-thirds innings and a win over Mars Hill on March the 10th. And then the 22 strikeout game against Queens two weeks ago here at Pioneer Park. Struck out the last two batters, one to tie and the second one to break the Division II record. Also threw a three-hitter that night. Struck out 22, didn't walk a batter. And last week he had 11 against Carson Newman. So going for his eighth straight start with double figures and strikeouts. In conference play this year, counting tonight, throwing five and a third innings tonight, 36 and a third innings, he struck out 64 batters in 36 and a third innings. It's about two-thirds of the batters he's faced that he's retired. About half the batters he's faced, period. And that pitch is, stays up and in for a ball, one ball and no strikes to Casey Demko. Four home starts in 26 and 25 and a third innings. Hall now has 51 strikeouts. Wind up and the 1 0 pitch. Check swing, he went one ball and one strike. Said it before, but I you know, saw Placido Torres win the National Pitcher of the Year award here three years ago, striking out 15 guys a game. And you think you never will see anything like that again. Well, we're seeing that again here with Charles Hall. The 1-1 pitch. There for a strike, 1-2. and two. Torres holds the Tusculum pitching strikeout records for a season and for a career. Hall probably won't get there in a single season because 1-2 pitch is chopped foul. Torres was helped by some postseason. The Pioneers that year went to the NCAA tournament. So, Placido had some chances to pick up some postseason strikeouts. His career no mark was 272 strikeouts. 1-2 pitch, just off the plate. Two balls and two strikes to count to Demko. Wind by Hall, the 2-2 pitch. In on his fist, right back to Hall. Steps, throws, and gets the out at his first for the second out of the inning. Two down here in the sixth. As Hall really 
sawed him off on that 3 2 beat. He ran that one right in the fence. Demko had little he could do with it. Blake Libran will bat. He has struck out twice. Demko makes his way back to the dugout. Hall with his eight strikeouts today, now with 178 career strikeouts at Tusculum, which is tied for seventh with Kenny Lewis. He's passed a bunch of guys. He might pass three or four guys tonight. That's key foul. Started the night with 170 career strikeouts, which put him ninth all time. He passed John Austin Shepard in the first inning, then he got Matt Gallen's in later on, and just tie Kenny Lewis. Christian Rash is right ahead of him, 179 career strikeouts. The one pitch is cut on a miss, nothing in two. The count to Librand. Craig Goodman's up ahead, 196. Taylor Rakes with 209. Ethan Carpenter had 235 strikeouts. Some names of recent vintage for the Pioneers. Torres, 272, the career record probably out of reach, even though he only pitched two seasons also. The 0 2 pitch. Low, one and two. Hall last season only struck out 71 batters in 73 in the third innings, but and he only started nine games. But he has emerged this year as a bona fide ace for this Pioneer staff. He's ahead to count one ball and two strikes to Liber in the pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him for the third time as Montgomery will throw it down to first, and he'll make it official. Nine strikeouts now for Charles Hall. He's retired eight in a row. He is through six innings with this lead. Tusculum four, Coker nothing, middle of the sixth on the Pioneer Sports Network. Pioneer Park as Coker has made a couple changes on the infield. Apparently apparently Demko was injured when he uh, ran out that comebacker because he is now out of the game. Brian Brian Castillo is now in the game at third base as moving over to shortstop is Chase Bruno. Castillo in the nine spot vacated by Demko. First pitch to Seth DeHaven is taken for a ball. DeHaven struck out and singled, stole a base, and then was caught off third base on that line drive that the umpires got together, and I think they got it right on the ball that Ford hit that he hit off the off his shoe tops that they ruled was a line drive and caught by Bruno at third base turned into a double play. Two balls and no strikes to count to Seth DeHaven. The pitch to him is on the outside corner, strike one. Michael DeLeo came on in the second. He's still out there here in the sixth. He's pitched well. He's pitched in and out of trouble. He's only allowed one unearned run so far in his four innings. Pitch to DeHaven is outside. Three balls and one strike to count to Seth DeHaven, leading off the sixth. The wind up by DeLeo, the 3 1 pitch. Chopped to third, foul. It's full count. 
So full count to Seth DeHaven with Dalton Martin on deck, followed by Bryson Ford here in the sixth. Four runs, six hits, no errors for the Pioneers. No runs, one hit, and one error for Coker. DeLeo looking for the sign from Ball. The 3-2 pitch to DeHaven. Popped up, infield, playable. The shortstop Bruno is in, circles under, and makes the catch for the out. One down here in the sixth. And Dalton Martin will bat. Martin, homer to lead off the bottom of the first inning. Flying out to deep center, and then walk and stumble these back in the corner. So Martin is one for two officially. Facing DeLeo for the third time. Pitch. Inside, one ball and no strikes. Newberry leads Wingate 5-3. to three. They're in the bottom of the fifth inning at Wingate. Catawba now 5-0 over Lenore Rhine in the bottom of the seventh at LR. 1-0 to Martin is outside, 2-0. Mars Hill leads Queens 7-4, bottom of the fifth inning at Queens. And Carson Newman 6, Anderson 2 in the sixth at Anderson. 2-0 pitch. Take it for a ball, three and nothing. So Tusculum, the only home team winning so far this evening across the conference. Wind and the 3-0 pitch coming to Martin. Takes ball four. So Martin has drawn walks in each of his last two at-bats. He's now walked 32 times this season. As he had hit play cat and mouse, top of the sack. Bryson Ford, the batter. Ford has popped up, singled and stole a base, and then lined into that double play back in the fourth inning. Martin on at first base, eight stolen, now nine stolen bases this year in 13 attempts. First pitch to four is taken for a strike. One strike to Bryson Ford. Ford, the sophomore out of Knoxville's Bearden High School. The 0 1 pitch, chopped to short. Bruno backs up on it, flips to Liberand at second on to first. That is a double play to end the inning. Nicely turned by the Cobras, 6-4-3, and that'll do it for the Pioneers in the bottom of the sixth. Second double play hit into by Ford in the ball game. One line drive, one at ground ball, as he's out at first base to end the inning. We finish six. It's Tusculum four, Coker nothing on the Pioneer Sports Network. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry, this might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. Oh, I'm so sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Legendary Discounts made Johnson City Toyota number one. And this month, our discounts are huge with savings up to $5,600 on new Toyotas. Camrys are discounted up to $3,800. So ready, set, go to Johnson City Toyota and get your savings today. We head to the top of the seventh inning with the Pioneers leading Coker by a score of 4 to nothing in the first of this three-game series. Two more on the schedule for tomorrow afternoon. First pitch will be 1 o'clock here at Pioneer Park. Again, there will be no video coverage of tomorrow's doubleheader. But we will have live stats through our webpage at TusculumPioneers.com. Leading off the top of the seventh inning for Coker is Grant Thompson, the center fielder. He has struck out and walked. His walk back in the fourth inning, the last base runner for the Cobras, and he was erased on a caught stealing. Hall with the windup in the first pitch. Hit foul, pass first. One strike to Grant Thompson. Thompson, Hall, and McCabe do up here in the seventh for Coker. They've been held to just one hit this evening, which is a 
One out single, a clean single on the bottom, of the top of the second inning off the bat of R.J. Ball. Wind up by Charles Hall, the 0 1 pitch. Thompson checks his swing. Will appeal to third base, but no swing. One ball and one strike to count to Thompson. Wind in the 1 1 pitch. Line to center field to Haven. Read it well. Goes to his right and makes the catch for the out. The Haven is very good at reading those balls off the bat, those line drives, and he tracked that one quickly and got it and made the catch for the out. So Riley Hall, the left fielder, hits. Hall has walked well, and struck out. Wind up by Hall in the first pitch. Hit up the middle into center field, a base hit. So Riley Hall has the second hit of the game for the Cobras. It's a one out single here in the seventh, and he's reached base safely twice. Larry McCabe, the first baseman, will bat. McCabe still trying to figure out Hall. He struck out twice. First baseman. See in the background some activity in the Tusculum bullpen. Kent Noe running down there, but don't know that he would necessarily be coming into the game, but you never know. Pitch to McCabe is high and away for a ball one and nothing. One ball and no strikes to count to Larry McCabe. Stretch in the pitch from Hall. Hit up the middle. Hall stabs it. Throws to second one. Ford on to first. Double play to end the inning. Hall with the stab of that sharp ground ball by McCabe. And he turns two in the middle. And the Pioneers get out of the top of the seventh inning. McCabe with the hard one hopper. And Hall sticks out the glove. And leads Ford. Throw on to first. In time by a step and a half. And the inning comes to an end. No runs a hit, nobody left. Stretch time here at Pioneer Park. It's Tusculum 4, Coker nothing on the Pioneer Sports Network. Ready, set, go to Johnson City Toyota, where new Tacomas start at $309 a month with zero down. Drive the all-new RAV4 for $209 a month or save over $4,000 on Highlander. See more great deals at johnsoncitytoyota.com. Family. Food's here! What's it mean to you? To us, it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love. Even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls. All the ingredients for family. We are in. I'm in the seventh here at Pioneer Park with Tuscaloosa leading Coker by a score of four to nothing. Both defenses have turned two double plays in the game. As that one six three double play into the top of the seventh inning. Michael DeLeo is still out there. As we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. It'll face Nate Montgomery, Bradley Evans, and Trey Hinton. Montgomery looking for a hit. He has a 13-game hitting streak on the line. He has been hit by a pitch, scored a run in the first, struck out, and grounded out. The lineup in the first pitch to Montgomery. Taken on the outside corner for strike one. Tuscan with three in the first, one in the second, and that's been all they've needed. Breaking ball is hit to center field. Going back on it is Thompson. He hasn't lined up, and he makes the catch for the out. Montgomery out on a fly ball to center. One down here in the seventh. 
So Riley Evans, a designated hitter, will bat. Evans has reached base safely all three times. He singled and scored in the first, was hit by a pitch in the third, and walked in the fifth. designated hitter, number 46, Bradley Evans. So Evans seems to be in the groove at the plate right now. After missing a lot of the early part of the season with heavy issues, but as you were behind him. The ball and no strikes to count to Bradley Evans. Pitch. High to him. Evans made his season debut two weeks ago against Queens. He's hit safely in five of his eight appearances. Swings and misses at that one. Two balls and a strike. He hit a two-run home run against Bluefield State back on the 20th of the month. Last weekend at Carson Newman, he was 3 for 12 in that doubleheader. Two balls and a strike to count to Bradley Evans. Pitch. Low 3-1. and one. Evans with nine career home runs in his Tuscaloosa career. 3-1 pitch to him. He's popped up in the infield. Way up there. Second baseman Librand, he's having trouble seeing it. Now the first baseman McCabe comes over and bails him out and makes the catch. It's still twilight up in the sky and Librand couldn't see it, but it was hit so high that McCabe was able to come over from first base and make the catch. Well, the Trey Hinton will bat with two outs and nobody on. Hinton also working on a perfect day. He's doubled in two runs and walked twice. Wind up by DeLeo in the first pitch to him. Showing Bunn takes the ball inside. DeLeo's done a good job of shutting down these pioneer bats. The 1 0 pitch. High to another. Leo's worked five and two thirds innings so far. He's walked five, struck out four, and he's not allowed an earned run. He's given up three hits. 2 0 pitch. Hit and takes a strike, two and one. Hall through seven innings, has nine strikeouts, three walks. He's only thrown 85 pitches. Just 49 strikes, 36 balls for Hall. 2-1 pitch. High, 3-1. Hall's been helped out a little bit by a couple quick outs, a couple double plays, a couple caught stealings. Three and one the count to Trey Hinton. Takes a strike, it's a full count. Three and two to Hinton with Garrett Dupuy waiting on deck. Leo gets assigned the 3 2 pitch. Outside ball four. Sixth walk issued by DeLeo. Three of them to him. He's now walked 32 times this season. Tying him with the team lead and the conference lead with Dalton Martin. So Garrett Dupuy batting. Dupuy trying to get on track tonight. He's lined to right and struck out twice. Both of those strikeouts coming by DeLeo. First pitch to him is low and outside. One ball and no strikes. One ball and no strikes to count to Garrett Dupuy. Next pitch is taken for a ball. Two and nothing. Balls and no strikes to count to Dupuy with McDade waiting on deck. <laughs> 2-0 pitch. 
high three in the lead. There is bullpen activity. Chances could be DeLeo's last batter. He's up over 100 pitches now. And five and two thirds innings out of the bullpen. 3-0 the count to Dupuy, the pitch. High ball four, so four pitch walk. And the Pioneers have two on and two out here in the seventh for Jarrell McDade. And Coach Luke Harrigan making his way to the mound as the bench comes up to congratulate DeLeo. This will be a pitching change for the Cobras. We'll have info on the new pitcher when we come back. Two outs in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's Tusculum 4, Coker nothing on the Pioneer Sports Network. Johnson City Toyota is the number one Toyota dealership in the Tri-Cities for the fourth year in a row. We sell more because we discount every vehicle every day. We give you a lifetime warranty and complimentary service. So I invite you to come see why Johnson City Toyota is number one. Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. New pitcher for Coker is right-hander Jake Moore. Moore making his 12th appearance of the season all out of the bullpen. He's a, we got one win, two losses, and a 8.44 earned run average. 21 in the third innings, 30 hits, 20 earned runs, 8 walks, 24 strikeouts, and opponents are hitting 319 against Jake Moore. Moore has been a mainstay out of the Coker bullpen for four seasons, the senior, making his 48th career appearance. All but one has been a relief role. He struck out 56 batters in 81 career innings. More, there is definitely more of him out there. 6'4", 250, out of Culpeper, Virginia. And he will try and put out the fire here. One number that's... A negative in Moore's column is that he's given up seven home runs in 21 and a third innings this season. Jarrell McDade, the batter. First pitch to him is inside for a ball. McDade has flied to left, popped up, and singled. Batting with Hinton at second, Dupuis at first. Both of them walked. So Moore trying to put out the fire here in this seventh inning. Pitch there for a strike one and one. The Leo threw 102 pitches, 53 strikes, 49 balls. But he has not allowed an earned run as of this point. Both those runners on base are his responsibility. One one pitch. In the dirt, but good stop by ball. The catcher, two balls and one strike to Jarrell McDade. DeLeo only allowed three hits, walked seven, and struck out four. Came on in the second inning after starter Griffin Holyfield gave up three runs in the first inning as the quote unquote opener. Two and one the count to McDade, the pitch. Launch to left field, hit pretty well. Hole back to the track, to the wall. He looks up, it's gone. Off the scoreboard, a three-run home run for Jarrell McDade, and he blows his game wide open. The Pioneers lead it seven to nothing. McDade's third or fourth home run of the season, RBI's 39, 40, and 41. As he crushed that ball to left center field. He said Moore's had some problems with the home run ball. And McDade lift and separate on that one. Deep to left center. Hall got back. And where did it hit? Right off his number 20. 
Good shot there by McDade. Don't let facilities see that. So seven to nothing Pioneers on the home run off the scoreboard by Jarrell McDade. Zach Fincham will bat. Fincham has reached on an error, scored, and lined out twice. He pops that one up in the infield. The shortstop, Bruno, makes the catch, and the inning is over. But the Pioneers tack on some insurance here in the bottom of the seventh. Three runs in the inning. The big blow with three-run home run by Jarrell McDade. And they lead 7 to nothing over Coker as we go to the 8th on the Pioneer Sports Network. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry. This might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. Sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Legendary discounts made Johnson City Toyota number one. And this month, our discounts are huge with savings up to $5,600 on new Toyotas. Camrys are discounted up to $3,800. So ready, set, go to Johnson City Toyota and get your savings today. Near the top of the eighth inning, Charles Hall gets a little insurance courtesy of Jarrell McDade, who hit a three-run home run in the bottom of the seventh inning to give Tusculum a 7 to nothing lead. Chase Bruno, who started at third base, now at shortstop, will lead off the top of the eighth inning against Hall. Bruno is grounded out and lined out. First pitch from Hall is right there for a strike. So seven nothing Tusculum with the lead here at top of the eighth inning. The one pitch hit to short. Ford stays with it, throw across in time, one out. Hall with nine strikeouts, trying to get an eighth straight game in double figures. R.J. Ball, the catcher, will hit. Ball, one of the two hits for the Cobras, a second inning single. He's also flied to center. The windup and the pitch from Hall, swing and a miss, strike one. One strike to count to R.J. Ball. The one pitch, high, one and one. Newberry has regained the lead on Wingate, 6-5. They're in the bottom of the sixth inning at Wingate. Catawba leads Lenore Ryan, 5 nothing. They're in the last of the eighth inning at Hickory. The one one pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. Mars Hill leads Queens 7-4. to four. They're in the top of the seventh inning at Queens. And Carson Newman leads Anderson 6-2, to two, bottom of the seventh inning at Anderson. Earlier today, Lincoln Memorial beat Finley 15-1 to one in a non-conference game. 1-2 and two to count to R.J. Ball. As he will step out. Ball looking for his 10th strikeout. 1-2 pitch. Got him. 10 strikeouts for Charles Hall. Give him double figures again. Eight straight starts and double figures and strikeouts for Charles Hall. 109 punch outs on the season. Matt Swiderski, the right fielder, bats. Swiderski's lined into a double play and struck out. First pitch to him. Bounced, foul, past third, one strike. Hall now at 91 pitches. No activity in the Tusculum bullpen. That's well within his range. No doubt that he'll get a chance to go out and finish this one in the ninth. Nothing and one the count to Swiderski.
Hall winds in the 0-1 pitch. Right there for a strike, nothing in two. Hall has faced one over the minimum through seven and two-thirds innings. The 0-2 pitch. Got him, called third strike. 11 strikeouts for Charles Hall. And another 1-2-3 inning for the right-hander. Middle of the eighth, Tusculum seven, Coker nothing on the Pioneer Sports Network. It's fine, it'll be okay, okay? Nobody, nobody cares about the flowers. Who needs flowers at a, a wedding? At Ingalls, we know that the best of plans don't always go according to plan. My best friend's getting married today and the florist never showed. That's why we're always there when you need us. What are their colors? Purple and cream. With smiling faces and helping hands. No one cares, no one cares you will look great. Flowers are not important. And where is Holly? Uh, have you, any, anyone seen Holly? And although life will be predictably unpredictable. Let's get you to that wedding. A curveball is that much more satisfying. I got the flowers! When you knock it out of the park. Oh my gosh, it's awesome! So when the plan goes out the window and improvisation becomes the order of the day, just remember, that's where the best of memories are made. All right, they're ready for us. True story. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. New pitcher for Coker as we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. This is the right-hander, Derek Ballbeers. Ballbeers making a sixth appearance. He started three games. He has one win, one loss. A 9.00 ERA, 10 innings, 10 runs. Seven hits, 15 walks, and six strikeouts. For Ballbeers, the senior, 6'4", 210 pounds, out of Somerset, New Jersey, by way of SUNY Albany. He'll try and keep the top half of the Pioneer lineup at bay. He'll start off with the bottom batter in the lineup, Seth DeHaven, who is one for three on his birthday. He struck out, singled, stole a base, and popped up. First pitch to him is bounced up there for a ball. One ball and no strikes to count to Seth DeHaven. One zero pitch. And there for a strike one and one. Paul Beer's last appearance was Tuesday against Lenore Rhine. That pitch is taken for a ball. Pitched an inning that day and struck out two batters. Outside three and one. That was in a nine to six loss to Lenore Ryan, which was a non-conference game. This is his first appearance in a conference game this season. Three one pitch. Way outside ball four to Haven. It's a leadoff base runner. Tuscan batters have walk eight times now. DeLeo, they'll book on him. Five and two-thirds innings. Three hits, three runs, two earned. He walked seven, struck out four. Dalton Martin at the plate. Martin has homered, flied out, walked twice. Also stolen base. Big jump for DeHaven. Double pump by ball, no chance. Stolen base for Seth DeHaven, his second of the game, his 12th of the season. Another stolen base for the Pioneers, their fifth of the game. Said coming into the play today, Coker had allowed 72 stolen bases in 30 games, and the Pioneers have exploited that. Pioneers do like to run. One ball and no strikes to count to Dalton Martin. Pitch low, gets through the catcher. Advancing to third base is going to be DeHaven. It's a pass ball, on ball. He's been running for his life back there at times today as some pitches have been all over the place. So the Pioneers now with a runner at third and nobody out. 
And two balls and no strikes to count to Dalton Martin. 2-0 pitch. Blow it in, 3-0. This is good news for Nate Montgomery, who's trying to keep his hitting streak alive, and he might very well get another chance, barring a catastrophe on the base paths. 3-0 the count to Martin. Pitch is inside ball four. Another walk to Martin, his third walk in a row. Fourth time he's reached base today. So Bryson Ford bats. Head to a double play his last two times. He's one for four. A single and a stolen base in the second, and lined into a double play in the fourth, grounded into one in the sixth. Batting with runners at first and third, nobody out. Buscombe's had a base runner in each inning today. Martin dancing around at first base, and Ballbeers throws over to first. Ford in the right-hand batter's box, waiting for the first pitch from Ballbeers. Martin bluffs going, pitches a strike. One strike to count to Bryson Ford. Martin's been dancing around over at first base. Now he hops off again, the pitch, high, two and nothing. Or one ball and one strike, check that. Martin's been getting a short lead and then hopping about three feet forward before the pitch. Does it again. And it goes. The pitch is way outside. The throw down to second is not in time. It's a stolen base for Dalton Martin. His second of the game. And his tenth of the season. As he joins Ford, McDade, and DeHaven in double figures in stolen bases. Two balls and a strike to count to Bryson Ford. Cabe is in, even with the bag at first. Everybody else at normal depth. The 2 1 pitch. Line foul pass to Haven. Two balls and two strikes. So Ford ripped that one foul. Two balls and two strikes to count to Bryce at four. To Haven at third, and Martin at second base. Ballbeer's pitch, way outside, bounces past ball to the backstop, and into scores to Haven standing, and it's eight to nothing. So to Haven made the, quite the circuit there. He walked, stole second, moved to third on a pass ball, and scored on a wild pitch. Now Martin's on at third, and it's three and two. The count to Bryson Ford. The stretch. And the pitch. Chopped to second. This will get a run home. Throw to first by Librand is in time for the out. So Ford is retired. He knocks in the run as Martin scores to make it 9 to nothing. Give him an RBI for Ford. That is his 30th of the season. And Nate Montgomery gets one more chance to try and extend the hitting streak. He's 0 for 3. Also been hit by a pitch, scored a run. So one out here in the eighth. The first pitch is outside, just a bit outside. One ball and no strikes to count to Nate Montgomery. Stretch. Pitch. In there for a strike, one and one. Montgomery, honorable mention, all conference last year after hitting 315. One pitch, low and outside, two and one. Two balls and a strike to count to Nate Montgomery. Two one pitch, up and in, three and one. Three balls and a strike to count to Nate Montgomery. 
Bases empty, one out here in the eighth, two runs in. Ball beers, 3-1 pitch, low and outside ball four. So Montgomery unable to get a swing there, so he'll take first base. And this is probably going to be the hook for ball beers as he got a chance to try and get an inning in and his control has not been where he needs it to be. So he's going to be departing in favor of the bullpen for the Cobras. 9 nothing Tusculum here in the bottom of the eighth inning. We'll have info on the new pitcher when we come back on the Pioneer Sports Network. Johnson City Toyota is the number one Toyota dealership in the Tri-Cities for the fourth year in a row. We sell more because we discount every vehicle every day. We give you a lifetime warranty and complimentary service. So I invite you to come see why Johnson City Toyota is number one. Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. New pitcher for Coker is the right-hander, Jonathan Ford. Ford is making his sixth appearance of the season all out of the bullpen. He has no record, an 8.68 earned run average, nine in the third innings, 10 hits, nine earned runs. He's walked nine, struck out five, and allowed two home runs. The opponents are batting. 278 against Jonathan Ford, the sophomore, 5'9", 155 pounds, out of Pickens, South Carolina. So he'll come in here to try and get these final two outs of the eighth inning. Bradley Evans will bat. Evans has singled and scored, been hit by a pitch, walked, and popped up. Ford 5'9", 155 pounds. First pitch to Evans is their first strike. Lenore Ryan has tied Coker 5'5". Five, five. They've scored five runs in the bottom of the eighth inning to tie it. So, a big comeback for the Bears. Nothing and one the count to Evans. The pitch fouled at the plate, a ball and a strike. Or no balls and two strikes. So, Catawba led that game 5 nothing going in the bottom of the eighth inning. But it is now tied. Brian Ketchy was the starter for Catawba. Took that shutout into the eighth. Saw it slip away. Nothing in two to Evans. The pitch is outside one and two. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Marzell leads Queens 7-5, bottom of the seventh inning at Queens. Newberry is six, Wingate five. They're in the top of the seventh inning at Wingate. Pickoff throw is errant, and moving up is Montgomery, and he'll take the turn at second, and he'll go on all the way over to third base on the throwing error. Now he's at third base with one out. Ball and two strikes to count to Evans. Carson Newman leads Anderson 6-4 in the seventh. So Catawba trailing is good news for the Pioneers. Wingate trailing to Newberry. Depends how you want to slice that one. The Pioneers do not play Newberry this season, so they're, if they want to try and catch them, they're going to need some help. Tusculum does have the series win over Wingate as a tiebreaker in their back pockets. Tuscum also does not play Catawba this season. The 1 2 pitch, swing and a miss. Evans down on strikes for the second out of the inning. Trey Hinton will bat. Hinton's working on a perfect day at the plate. He's doubled home two runs, walked, walked, and walked. Scoring on the, after that third walk in the seventh inning. 
Pioneer's remaining series are against Anderson, Lincoln Memorial, and Lenore Ryan, the latter two here at Pioneer Park. First pitch to Hinton, swing and a miss, strike one. One strike to count to Trey Hinton. The 0 1 pitch, high 1 and 1. Nine runs, seven hits, no errors for Tusculum. No runs, two hits, two errors for Coker. There is activity in the Pioneer bullpen. We'll see if Hall comes out for the ninth or not. The pitch is fouled away by Hinton, the ball on two strikes. Hall is at 94 pitches. So pitch count is not an issue. One and two, the count to Hinton, the pitch. On the outside corner, called third strike. So Hinton goes down looking. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Jonathan Ford, and he will get out of this bottom of the eighth inning with two strikeouts. Go to the top of the ninth inning. It's Tusculum 9, Coker nothing on the Pioneer Sports Network. Hello, my name is Jacob Faith, and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. Pioneers changing their battery as they go to the top of the ninth inning. Chase Woolenweber now behind the plate, replacing Nate Montgomery. And the new pitcher is going to be right-hander Kent Noe. Noe has been effective this season, getting a chance to get some innings here, get an inning here. Sixth appearance of the year, he's made three starts, one win, no losses, a save, a 1.23 earned run average. Now, he's allowed four unearned runs in 14 and two-thirds innings, but we won't mention that part. 14 and two-thirds innings, 13 hits, two earned runs, eight walks, 11 strikeouts for the big right-hander Kent Noe, 6'4", 170 pounds, out of Gibbs High School in Knoxville. So he'll... Try and finish what Charles Hall started. Hall departing after eight very effective innings, 11 strikeouts, and three walks for Charles Hall. And he is in line to pick up his fifth victory of the season. Noe's last appearance was Tuesday night at Lee. Pitched two innings of relief, allowed a hit, and struck out one and walked one. Austin Moore is leading off the top of the seventh, not top of the ninth inning, and he swings and misses at the first pitch from Kent Noe. Morris has walked and struck out in his two plate appearances. The 0 1 pitch, up and in, ball and a strike. Noe making his second appearance in conference play this season. He got a win with four and two thirds innings of relief at Mars Hill back on March the 11th. Pitches a ball, two balls and a strike. Noe has been a midweek starter for the Pioneers this year. His three starts coming in midweek games. Win over Goldie Beacom on February 25th. Bluefield State, where the Pioneers went, used nine pitchers for nine innings. Three balls and a strike to count. Two Morris leading off the ninth. Pioneer pitching staff this year has two shutouts. Three balls and a strike to count to Morris. Popped up in the infield. Woolen Weber and Dupuy will watch it fall. That's probably the first baseman's ball all the way, but Woolen Weber came out and they both watched it drop in for a foul ball. Three balls and two strikes. So he'll move on to the next pitch.
Three and two, the count to Morris, leading off the ninth. Now he's pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him. One down here in the ninth inning. And batting for the first time is the third baseman, Brian Castillo. Castillo, 125 hitter, 3 for 24 this season with an RBI. No, he's pitched to him. Is there for a strike. Castillo, a freshman out of Miami, Florida. The old one pitch bounces up there, blocked by Weber, a ball and a strike. One ball, one strike to count to Castillo. 1-1 one, one pitch. Two balls and a strike. Lenore Ryan and Catawba go to the ninth, tied at five, after Lenore Ryan scores five runs in the bottom of the eighth inning to tie it. Mars Hill leads Queens 7-5, top of the eighth at Queens. Low and away, 3-1. and one. Newberry 6-5 over Wingate in the seventh at Wingate. And Carson Newman leads Anderson 8-5, to five after, or 7-5 to five after 8 at Anderson. Three balls and a strike to count to Castillo. The one down here in the ninth inning. No, he's 3-1 pitch. Right down the pipe, three balls and two strikes. Three and two the count to Castillo. No, he's pitch. Hit to second. Martin has it on a couple of hops. His throw to first. In time for the out and two down here in the ninth inning. Tusculum pitching, again, has faced just one batter over the minimum today. Hall gave up three walks and two hits. The only batter that was left on base was Riley Hall, who walked in the first. R.J. Ball singled in the second. He was erased on a line drive double play. Batter that reached in the third inning, Morris. He was erased on a fielder's choice and then a caught stealing into that inning. Grant Thompson walked in the fourth. He was erased on a caught stealing. And then a single by Hall in the seventh. He was cut down on a double play. So just one batter left on base today for the Cobras. Batting for Libran, the second baseman, is going to be Gavin Matthews. And he pops this one up. Should be the ball game. Hinton sticks with it and makes the catch, and the ball game is over. A brilliant pitching performance today by Charles Hall as he struck out 11 over eight innings and gets the victory. And the Pioneers take the first of this three-game series with Coker, winning by a score of 9 to nothing. We'll be back with the totals and a recap of this one in just a few moments. You're listening and watching to Tusculum Basket Baseball on the Pioneer Sports Network. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry. This might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Back here at Pioneer Park where the Pioneers have picked up the victory in game one of this three game series over Coker, winning by a score of nine to nothing. The Pioneers got there quickly in the first inning, scoring three runs in the bottom of the first against the Cobras starter, Griffin Holyfield. Dalton Martin led off the bottom of the first inning with a solo homer, and Trey Hinton added a two-run double later in the inning to make it three nothing. In the second, Zach Fincham led off. He reached on an error, stole second, eventually scored on a wild pitch to make it four nothing Pioneers. And that lead held all the way into the seventh inning as reliever Michael DeLeo came in and shut the door on the Pioneers over the middle innings. But in the eighth, he walked two batters. In the seventh, he walked a pair of batters, and that forced the bullpen to be called. And reliever Jake Moore came in and served up a three-run home run to Jarrell McDade, which made it 7 nothing Pioneers. Tuscombe got two more runs in the bottom of the eighth inning. A wild pitch drove in one run, and a ground out by Bryson Ford 
knocked in the other run as the Pioneers finish it off in the ninth, winning by a score of nine to nothing. Charles Hall, your winning pitcher, he's now five and one on the season. Eight innings, two hits, no runs, three walks, eleven strikeouts for its eighth consecutive game of ten or more strikeouts. He threw 94 pitches, 57 of them were strikes. Kent Noe pitched a perfect ninth inning with the strikeout to finish off the combined shutout for the Pioneers, their third shutout of the year. Griffin Holyfield takes the loss for Coker as he drops to 2-2 two and two on the season. Pioneers out hitting Coker by a margin of 9-7. to seven. For Tusculum, they had nine runs, seven hits, no errors, eight left on base. For Coker, no runs, two hits, two errors, and one left on base. Hall again the win, five and one. Holyfield the loss, two and two on the season. Offensively for the Pioneers, they were led by birthday boy Seth DeHaven. One for three at the plate with a walk. He wasn't the leader, but he was a leader on the at the plate today. Also stole a pair of bases. Jerrell McDay, two for four, the three run home run. Trey Hinton. One for two, two RBIs, three walks. Dalton Martin, one for two with a homer and three walks as well. As the Pioneers walked ten times in the game against five Coker pitchers. DeLeo went five and two-thirds innings, walked seven, struck out four. But he pitched well in relief, but it wasn't enough as the Coker bats were held silent today by Charles Hall. The time of the game was 2 hours and 27 minutes here on this Friday night, the first of this three-game series. The Pioneers will be right back here tomorrow afternoon with the Cobras. It'll be a 1 o'clock first pitch. And again, no video coverage tomorrow. We will have live stats through our website at TusculumPioneers.com. One last look at the South Atlantic Conference scoreboard. Newberry leads Wingate 6-5 to five in the bottom of the seventh inning. Catawba and Lenore Ryan have gone to the bottom of the ninth inning. They are tied at 5. Mars Hill leads Queen 7-5, bottom of the eighth inning. And Carson Newman leading Anderson 7-5 there in the eighth inning in that ball game as well. Tuscan with the win now 22-12 overall, 10-3 in the South Atlantic Conference. Coker drops to 11-19 overall and 5-11 and in the league. Again, 1 o'clock first pitch tomorrow afternoon. Come on out to the ballpark. It's going to be a beautiful day, and we hope to see you here for this doubleheader between Coker and Tuscan tomorrow afternoon. For our producer, Nick Forsberg, I'm Jim Miller. You can catch more highlights of today's game, interviews, and much more on our website, TuscalandPioneers.com. Following the conclusion of this game, also videos will be posted on our YouTube page, which you've been watching here this evening. Make sure you have it bookmarked, like it, subscribe, do all the stuff that makes that pop up on your timeline because you want to catch all of Tusculum athletics, not just this season, but in the years to come as well. So your final score once again, Tusculum 9, Coker nothing. Thanks for tuning in to Tusculum Baseball this evening on the Pioneer Sports Network.